Olá, seja bem-vindo à primeira transmissão ao vivo do Culto em Português da Admiring Place. Meu nome é André e eu sou um dos ministros de louvor da TMP. Essa live foi decidida de última hora, então eu peço a compreensão de vocês sobre o que vai acontecer hoje. Mas a live foi feita em resposta ao que a nossa comunidade estava pedindo, que tivéssemos os nossos cultos novamente. Como você sabe, os nossos cultos ocorriam toda a última quarta-feira do mês, às 6 horas da tarde, na igreja. Mas com o Covid, nós decidimos mudar então isso para a nossa transmissão ao vivo, no YouTube, no canal da igreja. Antes de começar o nosso culto, gostaria de dar algumas informações a você. Primeiramente, é que em nossos cultos teremos pregadores que somente falam a língua inglesa. Neste caso, se você estiver aprendendo, isso pode gerar alguma dificuldade, e o intuito do nosso culto é poder levar louvor e adoração a Cristo em nossa própria língua. As músicas serão em português, mas em caso tenhamos alguma música em inglês, você verá uma pequena legenda aqui embaixo com a letra para que você possa acompanhar também com a gente. Mas graças ao YouTube, nós temos uma ferramenta que pode ajudar aqueles que têm dificuldade em entender, colocando legendas automáticas. Isso mesmo, você pode ter legendas automáticas no vídeo para poder acompanhar as músicas e pregações em outras línguas. Como, por exemplo, se você só fala inglês e gostaria muito de acompanhar as músicas que nós iremos cantar, você pode mudar a legenda para inglês e assim... A música cantada em português aparecerá automaticamente com legendas em inglês embaixo. E assim, para pessoas que não entendem ou ainda estão aprendendo a língua inglesa, durante as pregações em que teremos pastores que só falam inglês, você poderá escolher a legenda em português e ver a legenda ao mesmo tempo aqui. Isso irá ajudar a todos terem um contato e a comunhão, como sempre gostaríamos de ter aqui na The Meeting Place. Hoje, no nosso primeiro culto, teremos nosso querido pastor John pregando. E como você sabe... Então, essa pregação será em inglês. Então, para isso, eu vou te dar algumas dicas que podem te ajudar a acompanhar esse culto hoje. Caso você tenha dificuldade e queira habilitar a opção de legenda nesse vídeo, você pode seguir algumas opções como essas. Se você estiver assistindo no seu computador ou na sua televisão, você encontrará uma ícone parecida com essa que eu acabei de colocar aqui do lado, que tem dois Cs, que é o Close Caption. A hora que você clicar em cima, ele irá habilitar automaticamente a legenda baseado na língua do seu cadastro do Google. Mas caso a língua não esteja correta, você pode clicar nesse outro ícone aqui e escolher a língua da sua preferência, caso você queira escutar em inglês e acompanhar a legenda em inglês também. Caso você esteja utilizando o seu tablet ou o seu celular, você irá encontrar um ícone parecido com esse daqui, que são três pontos. Quando você clicar nisso, ele te dá opções de selecionar a legenda. Se o seu dispositivo estiver em português, provavelmente estará escrito legenda. Se estiver em inglês, estará escrito caption. Clicando em cima, você poderá escolher a língua que você deseja ver as legendas. Dessa forma, você poderá acompanhar os cultos com a gente. E será ótimo poder ter você em nossa companhia. Então é isso. Todas as minhas informações já foram dadas e se você tiver qualquer dificuldade ou qualquer problema, sugestão, comentário, deixe aqui embaixo no vídeo. É a nossa primeira transmissão e nós queremos aprender com você como fazer isso melhor. Então, chega de falação e vamos começar o culto, certo? Então eu desejo a vocês um ótimo culto e que Deus abençoe a cada um de vocês. Queremos dar início ao nosso culto em português E nada melhor do que juntos na presença dele Oferecermos esse momento a ele em oração Por isso eu te convido a orar comigo Jesus, em meio ao que estamos enfrentando, Pai Em meio aos tempos difíceis, Senhor O Senhor continua sendo, Pai o centro das nossas vidas. O Senhor continua sendo aquele Pai a quem os nossos olhos e as nota, nossas petições correm, Deus. Elas correm para Ti, Senhor. Mas sem nos esquecermos, Senhor, que o Senhor é digno da nossa honra, da nossa, da, do nosso dar-te honra, dar-te glória, Senhor. O Senhor é digno, Senhor. O Senhor é digno das nossas vidas, Senhor. Em meio à dificuldade, em meio à alegria, em meio aos momentos fáceis e difíceis, Pai. O Senhor é digno 
das nossas vidas, do nosso amor, da nossa gratidão eterna, Senhor. E o Senhor também é e deve ser colocado no centro, Pai, no centro das nossas vidas, da nossa vontade, no centro, Senhor das nossas dificuldades também, Pai, porque eu sei que em meio ao caos, ainda, Pai, assentado, soberano, sobre um trono eterno, o Senhor continua governando reis e reinados. E nós, Pai, juntos, Pai, entregamos o controle nas Tuas mãos e Te dizemos, Tu és soberano sobre tudo, sobre as nossas vidas, Senhor. Por isso nós realinhamos, Senhor, o desejo dos nossos corações, Pai, de amar-Te, Senhor, de Te ter, Senhor, acima de todas as coisas, no centro das nossas vidas. Vem reinar sobre nós, Pai, vem reinar, Senhor, e recebe esse momento de culto, Senhor. Recebe esse momento de adoração, Senhor. Que suba ao Senhor como incenso suave, Senhor. E que o Senhor se agrade, Pai, do que nós estamos fazendo aqui, porque é para a Tua glória, Senhor. E é por Tua causa, Senhor. Em nome de Jesus. Jesus. Seja o centro da minha vida O lugar que fixo olhar Seja o centro da minha vida Jesus Seja o centro da minha vida O lugar que fixo olhar Seja o centro da minha vida Tu és o centro de todo o universo Tudo foi feito por Ti Fôlego de todo ser Nós fomos feitos pra Ti Tu és o centro de todo o universo Tudo foi feito por Ti Jesus, fôlego de todo ser, nós fomos feitos pra Ti Jesus, seja o centro da minha vida O lugar que fixo olhar Seja o centro da minha vida Jesus Seja o centro da minha vida O lugar que fixo olhar Seja o centro da minha vida Tu és o centro de todo o universo Tudo foi feito por Ti Jesus, fôlego de todo ser Nós fomos feitos para Ti Tu és o centro de todo o universo, tudo foi feito por ti Jesus, fôlego de todo ser, nós fomos feitos pra ti Tu tens tudo em tuas mãos Tu tens tudo em tuas mãos Tu tens tudo em tuas mãos Olhar ao céu, envolvo meu ser em ti, Senhor. Ergo olhar ao céu a ti. Eu ergo olhar aos céus, envolvo meu ser em ti, Senhor. Ergo olhar aos céus a ti. Oh Christ, be the center of our lives. Be the place we fix our eyes. Be the center of our lives. Oh Christ, be the center. Center of our lives. 
hold everything together. You hold everything together. You hold everything together. We lift our eyes to heaven. We wrap our lives around your life. We lift our eyes to heaven, to you. We lift our eyes to heaven. We wrap our lives around your life. We lift our eyes to heaven, to you. Ele seja o centro das nossas vidas e nesse tempo de coronavírus nós sabemos que nós temos um Deus que pode sarar todas as nações em 2 Crônicas 7,14 ele diz é, se meu povo que se chama pelo meu nome se humilhar e orar e se arrepender dos seus maus caminhos e buscar a minha face então eu ouvirei dos céus perdoarei os seus pecados e sararei a sua terra e não que o coronavírus seja um, uma resposta ao nosso pecado, não é isso, mas é uma resposta a, ao mundo caótico, falho que nós temos. Né? E eu acredito que se a igreja se posturar em, em arrependimento, em buscar a face do Senhor, é, existe é, cura para o que nós estamos vivendo agora, existe cura para essa situação. Que nós possamos tirar o, o melhor proveito também dessa situação, é, honrando ao Senhor, centrando os nossos corações e as nossas mentes nele, sabendo que ele é um Deus que cura, que ele é um Deus que detém todas as coisas nas suas mãos, detém o controle de tudo. E como eu disse no início, ele continua sentado sobre o trono, soberano sobre tudo e todos. Então eu te convido a cantar essa canção comigo e declarar que ele é que ele venha trazer cura, declarar cura sobre as nações, não só cura sobre coronas, mas cura sobre o caos do mundo, através da verdade, do amor e da vida que há em Cristo. Amém? Aventurado é o que está em tua casa te louvar. Tua força vem lá dos céus e o coração firme está em Deus. Bem-aventurado é o que está. Em tua casa te louvar Tua força vem lá dos céus E o coração firme está em Deus De força em força vou viver Até a tua face ver nosso clamor, ó oh, Deus onipotente, sara essa nação, enquanto juntos te adoramos. Bem-aventurado Bem-aventurado é o que está Em tua casa te louvar Tua força vem lá dos céus E o coração firme está em Deus De força em força vou viver 
até a tua face ver ouve o nosso clamor ó oh, Deus onipotente sar essa nação enquanto juntos te adoramos ouve o nosso clamor ó oh, Deus onipotente sar essa nação enquanto juntos te adoramos só tu és santo só tu és santo só tu és santo Deus só tu és santo só tu és santo só tu és santo Deus só tu és santo só tu és santo essa nação enquanto juntos te adoramos ouve o nosso clamor ó oh, Deus onipotente sar essa nação enquanto juntos te Eu 
acredito que Jesus é o Cristo Eu acredito que Ele é o Messias Eu acredito que Ele se fez carne Viveu, morreu, mas ressuscitou Eu acredito que Ele foi exaltado Acima de demônios, homens e anjos Eu acredito que Ele há de vir Sobre as nuvens do céu Com poder e glória Eu não sou membro de religião Entreguei a Cristo o meu coração Eu acredito em Jesus Eu conversei com Ele hoje Ele é o meu amigo, meu Senhor O meu Salvador Eu acredito em Jesus Eu conversei com Ele hoje Ele é meu Mestre, meu Senhor O meu Salvador Eu acredito em Jesus Eu conversei com Ele hoje Ele é o meu amigo, meu Senhor O meu Salvador Eu acredito em Jesus Eu conversei com Ele hoje Ele é meu Mestre, meu Senhor O meu Salvador Jesus E nada melhor para entronizar o nome do nosso Senhor do que declarar esse nome, declarar o nome de Jesus, o nosso amor por esse nome e simplesmente o mencionar desse nome. Eu acredito mesmo que pronunciar o nome de Jesus quebra cadeias, quebra correntes, quebra prisões, liberta cativos, ressuscita mortos, cura. Que nós possamos, é, com essa canção, declarar o nosso amor por Jesus e o nosso amor por esse nome, dado pelo qual haja salvação a todos os povos. Amém. Falar nome mais puro que eu já ouvi. Esse nome me faz tanto bem. É um nome que me dá prazer. Nome tão terno e sobrenatural. Ele é mais doce que o mel. Esse nome me faz tanto bem. É um nome que me dá prazer. Eu não me canso de falar. Nome mais puro que eu já ouvi Esse nome me faz tanto bem É um nome que me dá prazer Nome tão terno e sobrenatural Ele é mais doce que o mel Esse nome me faz tanto bem É um nome que me dá prazer Jesus Jesus Jesus, 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 eu não me canso de falar, nome mais puro que eu já ouvi. Esse nome me faz tanto bem 
É um nome que me dá prazer Nome tão terno e sobrenatural Ele é mais doce que o mel Esse nome me faz tanto bem É um nome que me dá prazer Jesus 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 Tu és o pão da minha vida Água que mata minha sede Minha alma está satisfeita só em Ti Tu és o pão da minha vida Água que mata minha sede Minha alma está satisfeita só em Ti Tu és Tu és o pão da minha vida Água que mata minha sede Minha alma está satisfeita só em Ti Tu és o pão da minha vida Água que mata minha sede Minha alma está satisfeita só em Ti Jesus Jesus Jesus, 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 Jesus. Good evening to the Portuguese language service. I'm Pastor John, and if you are new to the Portuguese language service, then a special welcome to you. Uh, you may be gathering in another church community and just here at the meeting place for the evening. A special welcome if you're a guest here. We have been meeting monthly for a number of years, and I have often enjoyed spending time with you, and I have not been able to do that for the last few months. And so I was really looking forward to being in person together with you, but this evening, of course, all we can do is meet with each other from our homes. I want you to know that the pastors and the elders of the meeting place are praying for you. And we recognize that we are concerned for our own circumstances. We're also concerned for the circumstances of our families and our friends. And your families and your friends are often in other countries, a great distance from you. You're concerned for their health and you're also concerned for the economic damage that the COVID-19 virus is doing in the many countries around the world and how this is affecting your families. And I wanna suggest that tonight we begin by praying for you and praying for your families and for the countries from which you come. And I'm gonna lead out and then maybe after I am done, you can each spend a moment praying in your home by name for families and friends and for the countries that you have moved to Canada from so that we lift our world up in prayer. Heavenly Father, you created us in your image. We are amazingly and wonderfully made. The complexity of the human body is overwhelming. And right now, the attack on the human body by the virus COVID-19 is devastating so many people. We ask that your mighty hand would move in our world and that you would work healing in our bodies. We pray for the many medical workers that are on the front lines providing care. Heavenly Father, protect them, strengthen them, lift the fears, the anxieties, and the distress in their lives from their shoulders so that they can serve with a, a greater sense of your presence. Jesus, you are the Prince of Peace. We ask that your peace would reign in our world, that your peace would reign in difficult economic times, that your peace would reign 
in homes where people are stressed and anxious and depressed because of their circumstances. That your peace would reign in relationships where people are experiencing tension, especially after spending many days together in confinement. Jesus, you are the great physician. We ask that your healing touch would rest on people's bodies. Many of us know someone who is affected by the COVID-19 virus. We pray for them in your mighty name. Jesus, we think of the countries from which those gathered tonight have moved. We pray for the governments in all of our countries that you would give our leaders wisdom. We pray for the medical systems in all of our countries that they would remain strong and fully capable. <clears throat> we ask, Father, for our friends and our families, that in this time, that you would both heal them, but you would draw their eyes towards you, that they would become aware of how much you love them, how much you care for them, and how much you have a great purpose for them in their lives, how much you want to save them, not just from their sins, but for great purpose in this world. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to encourage you to spend a few minutes now praying in your home for those by name whom you know who are affected both here in Canada and around the world, in your home countries, in your hometowns, in your family. I want to invite you this evening to consider how Jesus is the God of second chances. Just one week ago, we celebrated the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And if we take a look at John's Gospel, in chapters 20 and 21, we discover that there are so many people who experience a second chance from Jesus. You might be someone who is in great need of a second chance. You might need a second chance as a father or as a mother. Your, your kids have, have been challenging as you have been all at home together, and you've lost it, you have been upset, your anger has boiled over, and you need a second chance as a parent. Maybe you need a second chance as a husband or wife. Your relationship has been stressed and distressed. Maybe moving to Canada has been incredibly stressful in your marriage, and you need a second chance. Maybe as a son or a daughter with aging parents, um, you have had difficulty in your relationship with your parents. Maybe your relationship needs a second chance. And maybe, just maybe, you have said things and done things that you believe put yourself outside of the reach of God, beyond his forgiveness. The sense of guilt or the sense of shame in your life is so strong and so powerful that you believe that you are beyond second chances. Oh, you might believe in your head that you are, that Jesus is a God of second chances, but, but in your heart, there might be this deep awareness and conviction that you think what you've done, who you are, is unforgivable, unredeemable, unrestorable, unhealable. Tonight, I want you to consider how Jesus is the God of second chances, not just in the Bible, but in your circumstances also. So why don't you grab your Bibles and we are going to look at some of the characters in John chapter 20 and John chapter 21. Actually, I'd like to invite you to consider looking first at the crucifixion of Jesus, because this is where we see so many of the second chances happening. Think of how Jesus forgave the thief on the cross with the words, today you will be with me in paradise. This thief had like virtually no relationship with Jesus at all. Their first meeting was when they too were on the cross alongside him. And, and he, he says, remember me. The first act that we have in renewing relationship with, with God is the simple request, remember me. How do you want God to remember you? 
And when do you want God to remember you? This thief says, remember me. And Jesus says, today you will be with me in paradise. That's in John chapter 19. And then at the burial of Jesus, we discover that one of the people who comes to take care of his body after the crucifixion is a man named Nicodemus and another man named Joseph of Arimathea. These are disciples, it says, but in secret. Remember, Nicodemus is the same Nicodemus who we read of in John chapter 3, a man who is of the ruling council, a man of great power and influence, but who lived in fear of other people's opinion. It's amazing how even the powerful, and maybe especially the powerful, live in fear of other people's opinions. And other people's opinions prevented him from really um, experiencing the richness of relationship with Jesus. It may be that you have been a secret disciple, and you are ashamed because you are ashamed. Think about that. Because you are ashamed of your relationship with Jesus, you live with a sense of shame in your life. Today, one of the second chance relationships I want to highlight for you is Joseph and of Arimathea and Nicodemus in John chapter 19 at verse 38. These are people who experienced a renewal of relationship with Jesus even at the point of his death. And they did it by honoring and respecting his body. And they received special mention in scripture because Jesus is the God of second chances. The next person I would like to highlight is Mary, Mary of Magdala. Magdala was this seaside town on the Sea of Galilee. It was a Gentile commercial fishing city, and it was prosperous. Mary of Magdala was somebody who was described as possessed by spirits whom Jesus healed. Some people in the Bible have thought her to be a prostitute, but it's quite evident that she was a wealthy person, or from a wealthy family at least, and God healed her because she was possessed of spirits. She is someone who was faithful to Jesus and was probably one of those wealthy people who supported him in his itinerant journeys around what is Israel and Palestine now. She is someone who comes to the tomb and because of her faithfulness has an encounter with Jesus where she does not recognize him until she hears his voice and her words to Jesus are really, um, Lord, why are they have taken my Lord away and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. She did not realize that it was Jesus. One of the second chances that we need to have is when we are spiritually seeking to have our eyes opened to the reality of God. You might be somebody who is far from God, but spiritually seeking, if you know what I mean. You, you, are, you are searching out different world religions, different philosophies and belief systems. You are spiritually longing for an encounter with God, but your eyes haven't been opened. It says at this point, Jesus asks her, woman, why are you crying? And she, thinking that he was a gardener, said, sir, have you carried him away? Tell me where you've put him and I will get him. And Jesus says to her, Mary. And she cries out in Aramaic, Rabone, which means teacher. These are remarkable words because this is the second chance encounter that she has. Believing that her God her Savior was dead. Her teacher was dead. She has a second chance at relationship. You might have had a very vibrant relationship with God, one that was fully alive, but you feel like somehow that relationship is broken. Today I want to tell you that Jesus, like his relationship with Mary, Jesus wants to have a relationship with you also. And he wants to invite you to renew what was once live but was somehow broken. Sometimes trauma and tragedy breaks our spiritual relationships with God. It doesn't God break God's relationship with us, but we sometimes believe things in our head and heart where we've turned away from God. 
We long to be in relationship and yet we somehow feel the distance and separation. I want you to consider that maybe your second chance is a Mary of Magdala second chance where God has healed you and done remarkable things in your past and he wants to refresh a relationship with you today. The next second chance relationship that I would like to look at with you is found in John chapter 20 verses 19 through 22. The disciples, it says, are hiding in a room with the doors locked for fear of the Jews. They were hiding because they were afraid for their physical safety. They were scared that what has been done to Jesus will now be done to them as Jewish leaders try to stamp out their faith, stamp out the movement that Jesus has begun. You might also be someone who, having been a faithful follower, is living in the fear of other people's opinions. You are living in fear of other people's actions towards you. You may be scared that if you are clear about your convictions, you might lose your job. You might be scared that if you are clear about your convictions, you might have a family member reject you. You might be afraid that if because of your convictions, because of your faith in Jesus, if somebody really knew where you were at spiritually, that they would turn away from you and you would lose a friendship. My question is, who are you living in fear of? These disciples. The closest followers of Jesus were living in fear of the Jews. And Jesus stands among them and he says these words. He says, peace be with you. Today I want you to hear those words for yourself. If you are living in fear of someone, Jesus speaks these words to you, peace be with you. And then he goes on, he says, peace be with you as the Father sent me, I am sending you. Not only does he say peace in the midst of your fear, he wants to call us out of our fear and into action. Jesus wants to call you out of your fear and into action. But he wants to also give you the confidence that you're not out there on your own. And so he says these words. He says, receive the Holy Spirit. I am sending you. Receive the Holy Spirit. If you and when you begin to act in Jesus' name, you are doing so not on your own. You are doing so with the Holy Spirit living inside of you and working through you. Interestingly, the first mission that Jesus gives people is the mission of forgiveness. The first way of us extending Jesus' peace into our world, the first way of extending Jesus' peace into our relationships is to be ambassadors of reconciliation, those who deliver forgiveness. It says, if you forgive someone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. In other words, people's experience of forgiveness is depending on you. And so I want you to consider for a moment who needs to hear from you a word of freedom. They don't even need to have harmed you. They just need to be people who live with a sense of guilt and shame that is overwhelming. And you can invite them to experience the forgiveness of Jesus. And you can offer them those words. So consider how you might. With someone you know, Maybe someone in your family, someone in your workplace, who you know is living under a burden. Know that you can be the peace bringer on Jesus' behalf. Saying, I, I realize that you're living with an incredible weight, with a deep shame or guilt. I, I want you to know that it says in Scripture, if you confess your sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And I want to be an ambassador of forgiveness to bring a word of forgiveness. When somebody says, I want that, to say, you are forgiven in the name of Jesus. And when you do that, you lift the burden. On the other hand, we could be ambassadors who fail to do our job, to fail and fail to promise others the words that Jesus has promised to us. In their desire to be forgiven, we could be silent. I think silence is the withholding of God's forgiveness. And I want to encourage you to consider how in these days you could be a giver of forgiveness and a bringer of peace just as God has brought through Jesus 
peace to us, saying, peace be with you, and brought to us forgiveness in the presence of the Holy Spirit. The next person that we discover in need of a second chance is a disciple by the name of Thomas. It says, Thomas, who's also the twin, Didymus. Um, I'd be curious to know what his twin was like, because we have these opinions of Thomas, and, and so often our siblings are, re, are like us, but also very much unlike us. You might be like Thomas, but also in some ways very much unlike Thomas. Um, and Thomas wasn't in that locked room with the disciples when Jesus appeared. And he says to the disciples, unless I see the nail marks in his hands, if I can't touch his sides, I will not believe. Thomas is skeptical. Now, why wasn't Thomas in that locked room with the other disciples? Maybe it's because Thomas wasn't afraid. Maybe Thomas wasn't hiding in fear like the rest. Maybe it's because Thomas was the brave one who, when the disciples needed food, would go on behalf of the others. He was hiding, but he was brave. And so he went and he was the one getting food or, or searching something out for those who were otherwise in that locked room when Jesus appeared. But Thomas is also a man of intellect. He's a man who is truly skeptical. His rational mind says dead people don't rise. Even if he's seen Jesus do this in, for example, Lazarus's life, it's something that that is difficult to believe unless Jesus is the doer of it. It's hard to imagine that Jesus, his now dead teacher, could have risen. It, oh, it's beyond belief. Maybe you need a second chance in belief. You are an intellectually sharp person. Your rational mind says resurrections don't happen. I want you to consider that God is someone who walks in our world through the laws of physics. God is someone who works in our world through chemical processes and biological functioning. God has set our world in motion, and it works according to his laws. But while we are governed by God's physical, mechanical, biological, and chemical laws, that God is not governed by those laws. God is the governor, not the governed. And Jesus can work beyond those laws. That's why miracles happen, is God steps outside of space and time into our space and time and disrupts the natural order. Resurrection is a disruption of the natural order, one that Thomas could not believe. I want you to consider that maybe your second chance that you need is a second chance to believe that God acts in our circumstances and is willing to disrupt the natural order to save us from um, ourselves, to save us from our sin, and to save us from the things that have been done to us. Jesus appears and speaks with Thomas and says, Peace be with you. Put your fingers here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas's response is, my Lord and my God. And Jesus tells him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. I want to invite you to consider that your second chance is a second chance at belief. Your previous convictions, ones that you have committed yourself deeply to, you have argued with family and friends about the resurrection of Jesus, how this man could not truly be God. I want you to consider that today Jesus is giving you a second chance at belief. John chapter 20 verse 30 has these very interesting words. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Jesus did works that were miraculous so that we might believe in these days. In these days of the coronavirus, you might ask, why doesn't Jesus heal everyone? 
in these days, maybe when a family member is sick, not with a virus, but with a, a lifelong illness or disease, or they have been come overcome by cancer. And you're going, why are they not being healed? Let me ask you two questions. Would their healing cause them or someone else to believe? Or are we such a skeptical people that we would say, there is nothing in this world that would cause me to believe? You see, Jesus performed signs so that we might believe. So let me suggest that where miraculous things happen, we must be ready to give God credit loudly and boldly. These are written so that you and I might believe. God does these things so that we might believe. We might believe in who Jesus is. We might believe that he is God, that he is the Messiah, the one sent from God to save us, the one sent to rule as king in this world and king forever beyond this world. Your second chance at belief is to take a look at the signs and things that God has done and say, will I respond by declaring that Jesus, in fact, is the Messiah, the Lord, the King, God himself? Beginning in John chapter 21, there's another one of those second chance stories. The disciples, it says, have gone fishing. They have returned to their previous profession. The ringleader, his name is Simon Peter. A fisherman says in chapter 21, verse 3, I am going fishing. And they said to him, we'll go with you. We'll go with you. Peter is the same Peter who denied Jesus three times standing in a courtyard. That loud, impetuous, bold, assertive Peter. Who in his, in his greatest moment of, of following failed. You might have failed Jesus profoundly. You might have failed spectacularly. In fact, you might have been bold, and and because of your boldness, your failure is all the more embarrassing, all the more humiliating. And you turn back to your old ways. You're half the person, it seems, you used to be. You return to fishing not because you enjoy the work or the play of fishing, but because it's all you've got left. Jesus appears and he calls out, friends, haven't you any fish? Because they were catching nothing that night. And the answer is no. Throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. And when they did, it says, they were unable to haul in the net because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around, for he had taken it off, and he jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals and fish on it and some bread. And Jesus said, Bring some of the fish you've caught. So Simon Peter crawls back into the boat, drags the net ashore, filled with large fish, 153, it says. But even with so many, the net was not broken. Come and have breakfast. And then it says these things. None of the disciples dared. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. Jesus continues over and over and over again to reveal himself to us. There are times that you might look back in your life and say, God revealed himself to me over here. You might consider a time or place when you had a spiritual experience, an encounter with Jesus that was moving. You came to an understanding of God's love for you. Or you came to a place of healing for something that had happened in your life. Or you came to a profound experience of forgiveness. And yet, you don't believe. You don't believe because it's too good to be true. 
It's too good to be true, but it's not. My friends, it is not too good to be true. Jesus appears again and again and again so that we might believe. Tonight, I want to tell you that Jesus is here inviting you to believe again. It says that once they they were done eating, Jesus says to Simon Peter, the same Simon who denied ever knowing Jesus. He goes, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? I don't know whether Jesus is pointing at the fish. Do you love me more than your career, than your former occupation, from your sense of security? Do you love me more than these? Or maybe Jesus was pointing at the other disciples. Do you love me more than these brothers of yours? More than these companions? More than these friends? Will you place me greater than the esteem of your friendships? Or greater than the comforts and securities of your occupation? And Jesus, Simon says, you know that I love you. Again, and Jesus says, feed my lambs. Jesus commissions him to something. Again, Jesus says, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter answers, yes, Lord, you know that you love me. Take care of my sheep. A third time he says to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him a third time, do you love me? And he goes, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus says, feed my sheep. You might have been a passionate follower of Jesus who feels like like everything of faith has slipped out of your fingers. You might feel that all of those experiences in the past are truly in the past. and, And there is a deep spiritual emptiness. And Jesus invites you to simply renew that by naming your love. There's a reason I think Peter was asked three times. It's because he denied three times. He needed the opportunity to restate, to reinstate maybe, to restate his love and to reinstate the relationship. And God, in his infinite wisdom, gives Peter exactly what he needs. Tonight I want to tell you that God, in his infinite wisdom, provides you the opportunities that you need to renew your love for Jesus, to renew your experience with God, our Heavenly Father. And so, tonight is a night of second chances, because Jesus is the Jesus of second chances. If you have never before committed your life to following Jesus, I invite you to do so today. If you have in the past committed your life to following Jesus but you have grown weary and have sat down along the road and not continued the journey, I invite you to get up and keep following because Jesus is the Jesus of second chances. If you have lived in fear of others, tonight I want to invite you to throw off that fear and experience the love of Jesus who gives us second chances. If you are someone who has, through rational conviction, come to a conclusion that God cannot be real, that Jesus is not God, that the resurrection never happened, I want to invite you to consider tonight that Jesus is the Jesus of second chances. And if you have denied Jesus, if you've turned your back, denying you've ever been with him, then Jesus is the one who gives you second chances. I want to invite you to pray with me. And if you would like to commit or recommit your life tonight to pray these words with me, would you join me? Jesus, you are the one who gives us second chances. I need a second chance tonight. I need a second chance, Jesus. I confess my sin, my brokenness. I confess my rebellion. I confess my doubt. I confess my shame of you. Would you forgive all of those things and give me freedom and peace? I commit to following you as you ask the disciples. I commit to following you, to going and giving others the same forgiveness you've given to me. Thank you, Jesus, for your forgiveness. I now choose to make you 
Lord and King in my life and to do things your way from here on and forever. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer, if you have opened your life to the God of second chances, then I ask you to tell somebody. I would love to hear that myself. And so I'm going to ask that my email address be put on the bottom of the screen, that my phone number be put on the bottom of the screen. My email address is jnewfeld at themeetingplace.mbca.ca. Or it is John, you can call me at 204-333-2345. Jesus loves you. Our Heavenly Father loves you. And if you prayed for Jesus to give you a second chance to forgive you and become your Lord and your Savior, then he has given you his Spirit, who now lives in you to do the great and impossible things that God asks us to do including and especially extending forgiveness to others who need to hear that they have a second chance too. I love you and wish that I'd been able to spend this evening with you. God bless you. E nessa última canção, nós queremos declarar a graça do Senhor sobre as nossas vidas. Graça e merecida. Graça que Ele conquistou na cruz, que nós não éramos dignos mas que ele, que ele conquistou, que Ele conseguiu através da sua morte e ressurreição para nos libertar de todo o nosso pecado, de todas as nossas amarras e, e nos trazer para uma vida em abundância na presença de Deus. Que a gente possa sempre se lembrar da graça que nos trouxe salvação. Que eu não mereço misericórdia O castigo merecido que Ele não me deu É isso que sustenta todo o meu viver Amanheceu E as misericórdias de Deus se renovaram sobre mim E essa é a causa De eu não ser consumido Como entender Como entender Que um Deus maior Que todo o universo Se preocupa com uma simples Poeirinha como eu tua fidelidade é além de tudo que eu conheço Quero você, Deus Não consigo entender a graça Não consigo explicar a graça Posso sentir em meu coração Posso sentir em meu coração Eu posso sentir em meu coração Que Deus me ama como sou Amanheceu E as misericórdias de Deus Se renovaram sobre mim E essa é a causa De eu não ser consumido Como entender Como entender Que um Deus maior que todo 
se preocupa com uma simples poeirinha como eu Tua fidelidade é além de tudo que eu conheço Quero você, Deus Não consigo entender a graça Não consigo explicar a graça Mas posso sentir em meu coração eu posso sentir em meu coração Não consigo Não consigo entender a graça Não consigo explicar a graça de Deus Mas posso sentir em meu coração eu posso sentir em meu coração Eu posso Eu posso sentir em meu coração Que Deus me ama como sou Está comigo, eu sei que tudo vai ficar tão bem. Jesus é meu amigo, eu sei que tudo vai ficar bem. Jesus está comigo, eu sei que tudo vai ficar bem. Tudo vai ficar tão bem. Tudo vai ficar bem. Jesus está comigo, eu sei que tudo vai ficar tão bem Jesus é meu amigo, eu sei que tudo vai ficar bem Jesus está comigo, eu sei que tudo vai ficar tão bem Jesus é meu amigo, eu sei Senhor te abençoe.